They say small business is the backbone of America. So what's the best way to support a small business? It is to learn more about them and share with your family and friends. We interview founders from across the world who have started and scaled their business through the ups and downs, long hours, and the rewards that come from sacrificing their time to build their business. Welcome to First to Arrive, Last to Leave, the journey of an entrepreneur. All right, all right so welcome to another episode of First to Arrive, Last to Leave. Today we have Shalina Tinglin. She is a coach, a speaker, a trainer. We're going to talk about all that you do. Yes. I actually got to see her speak at the last cohort's yes. graduation, and she's like super legit. So oh, thank you. I was like, I need to have her on my podcast. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so thank you so much for my joining pleasure. us today. Absolutely. So tell us about your journey, because we were just talking before we hit mm-hmm. record. Uh, you started... I don't know if you started as a realtor, but you were a realtor. And I'm like, yes. I know yes. this is not what you do, although it's listed here. Yes, yes, yes. And then you were talking about having all businesses. So mm-hmm. I want I want to break this down, yeah. like your journey as from where you started to where you are now. Absolutely. So uh, I'm a New Yorker from Brooklyn, New York, and I started I my teaching. Until you did. Really? No. Yeah. Like, oh, no. I cannot <laughs> run <laughs> There it is. <laughs> so I, um, there, I, all I did was teaching education, but I always had this love for real estate. And I got licensed as a realtor, but I was doing so many different things. I said, no, my passion is really in teaching. So I stayed in teaching. Then I moved to Texas. And I, I people say all the time, why did you move here? Because I lost my mind. But honestly, it was because the opportunity for schooling was better for my kids. So I got here and I stayed in education because of that scarcity mindset. Mm-hmm. Then I got licensed as a realtor here in Texas, but I was still dual career. So I was teaching during the daytime at one of the local school districts and then realtor at night. I burnt out. So for all of you out there who are dual career, burnout is real when you're trying to go 110% in both fields. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting because I ended up in the hospital. I burnt out so bad from stress. I had no idea what stress does to the body until it does it. And so I'm there, my doctor walks in and she goes, hey, how you feeling? And I'm, I'm thinking we're gonna have this really good, positive, you're good to go home. She's like, yeah, you're replaceable. And I'm like, um, that's kind of rude. She's like, hear me out. If you kill yourself trying to be a realtor and a teacher, they will get a new realtor and they will replace you as a teacher. Your family is gonna be a little bit harder to replace you, but after a while, they're gonna move on. You need to pick one. So I decided to go into real estate. Oh, wow. And I went into real estate full time. And when I got in real estate, I saw more people who were doing what I was doing and that burnout cycle kept going. And I'm like, let me show you there's a better way. And so I got into working with dual career agents and I built this evening program for them to give them an opportunity to say, you don't have to do what you see everyone else doing. You can have this blueprint that's just for you and still be successful dual career. So I did that and then I I started noticing more people wanted to come to me for coaching and training and I'm like, huh, I should do something with this. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started coaching. And so I started coaching other real estate agents then that turned into other entrepreneurs and other fields. And then it turned into speaking. And, and now I'm certified uh, with the state of Texas to teach licensing. So where people need to get continuing education. And it has been amazing. But every day you're still learning. Yeah. So what changed in your business, though, when you went from dual to singular? So what did you change where obviously there was a necessity mm-hmm. there? Yeah. Yeah. Was it a mindset shift? Was it a business shift? Was it a little bit of everything that you were able to go all in? It was everything has to shift. Your mind, The way you think has to shift. And I wrote a book, What They Don't Teach You in Real Estate School, because you have no idea when you get out. I mean, everything, you don't really understand how to run a business. You think it's all about P&L statements, and it's not. And so I had to change the way I think and the way I thought. And thinking meaning okay, am I structured? Do I have systems? Do I have SOPs in place? And I'm not talking about son of a peach eater. It (laughs) is systems. (laughs) Do you have your systems? Do you have your standard operating procedures? I didn't realize what any of that was when I was dual career because I didn't have the time to stop and think about it. I was so Mm -hmm. focused on working with clients and I had to build a database and I had to work, work, work. I was working in the business and not on the business. There is a difference. And so I had to get more structured with understanding my day. And it was interesting because when I went full time, I didn't really have a full time structure because I was teacher during the day, realtor at night. 
And so I tell people real estate for me didn't start until 12 because Judge Judy came on 11, 11, 30 and I'm a law school dropout. So <laughs> <laughs> I had to get my law school with Judge Judy. And by that time, the day is done. You know, people yeah. have moved on. And and so it was a really tough lesson to learn about how you think about your business and even how you think about money. I didn't understand the importance of reinvesting in your business mm -hmm. so that you can work on it. Interesting. I've gotten yeah. sucked into Judge Judy TikToks by. Oh. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I love just, she's so sarcastic, so small so and sarcastic. Great, though. Yes, she is. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's the sole reason I'm not on TikTok because it will never come out. They'll be like, where right. is she? Because it, I'm fascinated and it'll just it'll just rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, understood. <laughs> so I'm curious because you started as dual, mm -hmm. and then when you were explaining that, you went into real estate, and then yeah. you started coaching, which effectively put you into dual roles again. Yes. What was different? Mm. So I think the, the biggest difference that I saw was who I was working with. Because when I'm dual career, it was with my students and my clients. Now that you're in this dual career realtor and coaching, you're working with other adults. And it's mm. almost as if those adults are still your students because there are things that they don't know, things that you're guiding them on. So they're similar in the fact that you're still in that teacher mode, mm -hmm. but they're different. And what I've learned is when we're adults, it is hard to change our minds. With children, they absorb and they're so ready to change. Adults, we get set in our ways and it's yeah. like, nope, I already know it. No one's going to change it. Yeah. That was the hardest uh, thing to overcome was helping people understand there's a different way to think. And so it was a challenge, and I kind of fell into it just helping people. And then I looked up, and now I have 40 coaching clients. And I'm like, whoa, we got to back this off because we're going to burn out again. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it can, you now have perspective because you've yes. done it once before. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, what did you go into Goldman Sachs as? Oh, I went into <laughs> Goldman Sachs as I call myself the bag lady because <laughs> I had real estate. I had coaching that I wanted to do speaking, that I wanted to change the world. I wanted to do all these things. And when I went into Goldman, it was interesting because people would ask me, hey, what is it that you do? I do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And they're like, um, OK, now tell us what is it that you really do? <laughs> and so it wasn't it's, it's funny because it wasn't until I finished and I left the program that I realized you're doing too much. Mm -hmm. You need to structure this to where, yes, you can have a brokerage. Yes, you can still coach leverage. And I went in to Goldman not leveraging, and I was on another trail to burnout because I didn't understand how important leverage is. So what was your growth plan? My growth plan was to launch the speaking component of the coaching program. However, I didn't have, and what I learned was you need to have these other areas buttoned up and tight yeah. before you start trying to grow another area. And so I went in and I said, okay, the growth plan for our company is we're going to start this school and it's going to have a, a speaking component and we're going to teach people. But then I looked and I said, well, you don't have your standards and structure over here. Mm -hmm. And so if the foundation is not right over here, everything's just going to fall apart. So I had to take a step back and look at what they were teaching us, including looking at my forecast, looking at my cash flow statements, looking at where do I want this business to be in the next five years, and then circle back and redo that growth plan. Yeah, because you were just creating one more thing that was you. Yes. So I, the, prob the problem you had going in where people mm -hmm. were like, what do you do? And you were like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like it's the same question too that a lot of um, <clears throat> entrepreneurs get stuck in like, who do you help? I help everybody, uh, right? We yeah. get stuck in this like, <laughs> I can do this. And, and I remember I too, <laughs> when I started, but yeah, when I started my online business, it was like, I could do everything. And right. then no one knows what you mm -hmm. do and like when yeah. when everybody would say I see what you do and I'm I still don't get it or I'm yeah. still unclear it is like the worst possible mm -hmm. statement you can hear as an right. entrepreneur right mm -hmm. so can you talk about the process that you went through to tighten yeah. it up like to mm -hmm. button it up so obviously you know you came out but what was that I came in listing doo -doo 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 -doo, yeah and now I came out where it's really super clear who I serve mm -hmm. and how I serve them that was difficult because I think a lot of times people feel like I'm going to leave someone out if mm -hmm. I niche down yeah. when in actuality, because you're not niche down, you're missing out on so much. <laughs> and so for me, I'm wanting to help everyone. And now people don't know when to come to me for business. Mm -hmm. Now it's I'm super clear on my ideal client. 
is that real estate professional or that corporation that needs a speaker or that realtor who's hit a wall versus saying, I just want to help everyone who's an entrepreneur. That's too big. Mm -hmm. You know, so you think about uh, your fast food chain restaurants. Chick-fil-A only sells chicken. You're not going there and getting a cheeseburger. So I had to be that Chick-fil-A in my head and say, hey, I need to find a lane and stay in it. Because when I was trying to help everyone, I felt that burnout coming again. Yeah. When I realized I have to get narrowed and focused and understand that my target audience has this problem. So finding out what the problem is that I'm trying to solve is what helped. So if I'm trying to help you solve, hey, I hit a wall in my business and it's a real estate business, I'm not really sure what to do next, that's where I come in. And my role is to, I like to tell people, tell me what it is that you're doing. And I'll listen and I'll, I'll hear it, but I want mm -hmm. them to keep going. I'm like, okay. I see where the problem is. You just said it, but let's see what else there is to it. And then we talk about what their strengths are. We talk about where are they leveraging. Nine times out of 10, they're not leveraging at all. And so we'll talk to people who have, I have all these clients, but I'm not making enough money. Well, what's happening? Well, people are falling through the cracks because they have no systems. Mm. And so once I realized that I need to make that shorter versus trying to go wide, I need to go deep. And that's what helped me focus, going deeper and understanding well, who was I helping? What was their problem? And how was I fit to help them? So a lot of entrepreneurs are scared to do that because they're worried about the opposite, right? If I go too deep, there's not enough customer base. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how your business changed? Like, did it did it grow? Yes. So it's, it's so interesting because going deep, I was thinking so small with, I'm just going to help these real estate agents and that's it. Not realizing that there's brokerages that there was my local association, that there were other vendor partners. There are corporations that need that conversation about growth and profitability, but I was so granular that I missed mm. that. And then when I opened up and said, here is my focus, now I was just on a panel Wednesday where it was such a diverse group of people from what they did that I'm sitting here like, I could only imagine if I did not narrow myself down and get specific, that I would be all over the place and wouldn't be able to sit here and talk to the needs of these people. And so once I was able to realize that, hey, opportunity opens up because now they know who you are. Now they know how you can help them versus saying, I'm just gonna open up a la carte and whatever it is, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. So once that happened, I started to get more opportunity where I can go in and help people. And so I think that's pretty big because there are a lot of small brokerages out there who don't have the support and I'm able to go in and enjoy those conversations with them and hug on them and talk to them. And I just love that part now. Yeah. That is, that's amazing. I think too, to have like what you said, the Chick-fil-A analogy, because you want to be everything for, to everybody mm -hmm. in the beginning of a business because you think that's where right. the money, money is. is. Yeah. Where, where was like the, cause you, you, you're doing real estate and you're helping yes. real estate businesses. Yes. Were, were you helping other businesses before, or has it always been? Okay. Yes, I was helping anyone who raised their hand. Oh. <laughs> it was I was helping people who just got licensed as notaries. I was helping mm -hmm. um, people who were mortgage lenders, um, insurance agents. Anyone who breathed and said, I wanted to start a business, I'll help, I'll, I'll help. No, 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 no. What, let me know when you get to point why, and then I'll come in and help you button it up with the rest of it versus me wanting to jump in and help them build this empire. And I had to narrow that down where, yeah, I going through Goldman Sachs, I can tell you what different financial documents you'll need, but I don't need to be the one helping you or guiding you through all of that. I'll give you some tidbits, but I'm over here in the real estate lane. That's where I'm gonna stay. Well, what is interesting too is that when you do things a la carte, the customer doesn't know what they need. They're confused. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so they're they're looking at this list and they're going, I'll take this, mm -hmm, this, and mm -hmm. this. And they might not even need any of that. Maybe yes. they need one thing. Yes. So how are you able to niche it down to what are like the categories? Like yeah. you know, is it like five or is it Yeah. So I listened to what their problems were. And the problems were common. And okay. so it was I was hearing the same uh problem over and over again where, well, I don't really know where to start or I don't really know where to find clients. That was, they said it in different ways, but it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. Started with structure. That's where systems came in. Some of them didn't know about time management, time blocking. Well, 
been there because remember Judge Judy 11 11 30 I did nothing until I watched that <laughs> so it was understanding how important your time is time is not going to stop and wait for you to figure it out it's going to keep going and so once I was able to understand that it's the same problem everyone's going back to the basics of I want to be a problem solver I want to help people but I'm not really sure how to do that and so once I realized that the problem was their growth and sustainability that was the first section. Yeah. The next section was a lot of people, what I've understood about adults is we all have some type of trauma or incident that has happened to us when we were younger. Some of us have closed it off and said, I never want to think about that again. And then some of us don't realize how it affects us as entrepreneurs. I was running into a lot of people who had these roadblocks and they couldn't figure out why. And then I would start to talk to them and just tell, tell me about yourself. Tell me about your business. Why did you start? Somewhere in the conversation, they bring up an incident or something that happened to them. Fear of rejection. Okay, well, when I was younger, I, I didn't fit in. I was rejected by my parents. I was rejected. That bleeds into their business. And now they don't want to cold call. They don't want to meet new people. They don't want to network because they're afraid of judgment and rejection. And so when you start to dig deep and people understand it, but I'm not going to solve that problem for you. That's something that... It was part of your life that may need therapy, but now you understand why you have this blocker in your business. When it comes up, you need an outlet to figure out how to get around it. And so those two were the biggest thing. A lot of it had to do with mindset, just the way we think about our business. I don't want to do video because people are going to judge me. Well, guess what? They're going to judge you anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're going to judge you the moment you wake up, the moment you open your phone, they're going to judge you. So it, give them a reason to judge you. Or they're not going to judge you because they don't even know who the heck you they, are. And they don't care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They don't care. So it's yeah. those hurdles, the mindset, dealing with past trauma, understanding structure and systems, and just getting past the what is everyone else doing imposter syndrome. Those were the big buckets that I realized a lot of real estate agents were dealing with, and that's where I started to focus my conversations. So I'm curious because just seeing you speak and mm -hmm. like, and I've talked to you before and it's like, you're very specific, like you're, you're a big personality mm -hmm. in a good way. Yes. And you're very, <laughs> that's that New Yorker. <laughs> yeah. But you're also very like specific, like going down these rabbit holes with mm -hmm. people is, it's harder to teach from that perspective, like yes. harder to replicate. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious as you're building this and the standard, you know, the SAPs and all the things that you do. How are you making it so it's not just you yeah. that you can help others take people down these rabbit holes yeah. and really, because it's a secret sauce, right, of what mm -hmm. you're figuring mm -hmm. out. But how much is that just it's a you secret sauce versus yeah. it's a replicatable secret sauce? That is such a great question. I, I realized that I was different when I was coaching and other coaches would say, but you need to stick to the script. We are not made to stick mm -hmm. to a script. And I realized that individuality is so important. We might do the same things, mm -hmm. but how we do it is going to be different. And so for me to replicate it, which I've started doing, and I, I have a mentee, and I, I look for people who say, oh, I don't think I'm going to do that, because they do. They're just afraid. Mm -hmm. They don't have anyone to walk them through it. They don't know how to start it. And so I have one in particular I was thinking about where I told them, I said, I think this is a great path for you. He's got a background in psychology. He knows how to dig deep with people. And he kept saying, you know, coach, this is, I don't think this is for me. Then he called me one day and he said, I got my first coaching client and, mm -hmm. and they did this and they did that. And I'm just listening. I said, so how did that make you feel? He said, it made me feel good that I was able to dig deep with them and help them figure it out. Because I can't figure it out for you. He helped them figure it out. And so it's when I'm talking to people, I like to get into conversation and have them practice on me mm -hmm. because great questions is what leads to exposure. It exposes what is the, the wall or barrier in your life that's stopping you from moving forward. And sometimes my favorite question, tell me more about that. Just keep asking, tell me more about that. Till they get a, to a point, they can't say anything else because we figured it out. Yeah. And so once I teach them how to ask questions, it's duplicatable. We just got to get people out of the mode of thinking everybody has to stick to a script, ask the question on page six or page seven. That's not where that person is right now. They're in a whole nother mindset. So we got to change what we're doing and say to them, OK, you're having trouble with building your business. Tell me more about that. And they might say something like, well, I didn't get up until one in the afternoon. They may be dealing with depression. They may be dealing with other things that coaching from a book is not going to expose. Yeah. They're just going to dig deeper into whatever the hole is they're in. Well, then you're only 
you're almost being narrow minded on mm-hmm. the way to you're like, nope, this, it only is fixable if it's this yes. way. Right, right. Yeah. And that's what I didn't like about standard coaching <laughs> is that I wanted to bring something different where they're leading, they're driving, they're discovering, because if they discover it, when I'm not there and the next issue pops up, they know how to dig to find, discover, and solve. And so do you have a team of coaches right now, too, that you work with or no. building that? Okay. <laughs> we're working on that. Okay. We are working on that. And that was one of the things from Goldman Sachs that we're working on is building that team. Um, because when you start talking to people about personal things like their financing and their mm-hmm. mental stability, it, it takes a certain character of person to do that. Because sometimes when you talk to people, what they're projecting can cast on you. So you have to have that right mindset to not go home and start thinking about that other person being depressed. And so finding the right people is important. I do have one right now. We're building him up to take on more. But because I've been through burnout, I understand. I I don't want to give you more than what you need right now. We got to create sustainability first. Then we build growth. Yeah. Um, I had a good question. I totally just. Blank. So <laughs> it'll come. It'll come back. It'll come back. Well, it's such a. I think there. It's such a fine line of burnout too. Yeah. Like you, it's hard to catch until you're already sort of too far mm. into it. So what are you? Th- what do you think some indicators are for like your your assessing yeah. this individual? What do you think was an indicator to say? Oh, that's that might be too much. When you are not doing the things you used to love anymore mm-hmm. because you're too busy helping someone else. That's my first indicator. Okay. You're on because that was mine where it was no longer about spending time with family. It was, well, I got to help this one. When I realized Mm -hmm. I was in the building from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., something was wrong. And I did that for a long time. And I got to the point where I wasn't going to my kids games. I wasn't able to enjoy my family. And then I was tired. Headaches. My health was the first indicator that say something's not right. It's time to get checked out. And I never forget I was sitting still and I'm an athlete. I love to work out. I love doing those things. My I was just sitting there watching TV. My heart rate was in the hundreds. And my mother in law is a nurse. And so my husband called her and said, Hey, is this normal? I knew it wasn't normal, but I didn't want them to tell me it wasn't normal. (laughs) And so he told she told him, No, you need to get her to a hospital because something's not right. Well, I had developed all these things. My body had swollen, and I did not know. And I look at pictures from back then, and I'm like, wow, this was burnout. And that's Mm -hmm. the thing about stress. It's a secret killer. It'll sneak up on you, Mm -hmm. and you're sitting having to deal with the repercussions of it when all you had to do was learn that no was a complete sentence. Yeah. How do you think ego plays into that? Oh, ego is big. It can, well, let me rephrase that. It can be as big as you allow it to be. Mm -hmm. And part of the problem with that is the whole imposter syndrome. So a lot of people want to be this, well, big, recognized coach, or they want to be this big, recognized real estate agent. And I just want to be whoever God created me to be. Because the problem with wanting to be everything to everyone, it puts you in the forefront. And this should not be about me. It should be about you and your journey. What is it that you want? Because if I make it about me, I'll forget you even existed. And now I'm building out a plan that you're like, well, this isn't really what I wanted because I felt like it was right. I felt like you should do this. And when you do the I, 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 Mm -hmm. you forget the person. And then they'll see that and they'll leave and they'll recognize there was no value being with you because it was all about you. Yeah. So I want to ask about going into an industry or not going in, doubling down, continuing on an industry that... I know DFW is not seeing, you know, I know interest rates are high and houses are still selling. Mm -hmm. Everything is Mm -hmm. still a okay, right? Yeah. Are you shifting your business at all, knowing times may get rockier? And are are you looking at things differently? Like, you know, maybe right now, I kind of everybody wanted to be a realtor, right? And now it's like, oh, wait, it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. I have to actually work at this. So you're looking at the coaching saying, all right, maybe I'm not going to help these people as much I got to double down on the people that really do run this as a business yeah. and do you, do you understand what I'm saying yeah, like, absolutely. Have you, are you shifting now with I don't want to be chicken little but <laughs> the world is falling I yeah. love that movie so that's a great question and um I to give some perspective I attended my first closing when I was nine years old 
My grandmother took me to a closing when she was selling a property back in New York. And mm -hmm. I'm sitting here at the attorney's table like, why am I here? I'm just a kid, but <laughs> not realizing the seed that had been planted. Mm -hmm. So I'd watched real estate in this roller coaster that it's been on. And we're actually not doing terrible. I remember mm -hmm. the days of interest rates of 18%. Exactly. And so I'm okay. And, and now we're starting to see um, properties are going back into multiple offer. I think buyers are getting to the realization that it's not going to go back down to where we were. Yeah. We came out of something that was never seen before, COVID. No one knew what it was. And, of course, the government had to make things right to get people out to spend money. Mm -hmm. And they did. And now they're like, oh, we're not going to do that again. <laughs> so I think people are getting to the realization that it is what it is. I'm either going to continue to rent and pay for my landlord's house or I'm going to be my own person. And what I understand is you can't help everyone. So my target is those people who actually want to take action. Because I've had conversations with real estate agents who they say they want to do it. Uh, you sit and you have these conversations mm -hmm. and then you follow up and they've done absolutely nothing. And that's your time wasters. And I tell them, don't waste. Somebody had to say that to me, don't waste my time. And so I had to tell them, don't waste my time or yours because you're not going to get it back. So if you said you wanted to close three homes this month, here's the plan. What's the action that you need to take? I let them tell me what they're going to do. When are you going to do it by? Great. Let's follow up on this date and let's move forward. If we follow up and you tell me that you didn't do it for, if it's, now I get it. There's some valid reasons because life happens. But if it was you were just sitting back with your popcorn watching, you know, whatever you wanted to watch and, or you got in your own head and, and I tell people, call me when that happens. We can't move forward no. because you're demonstrating that you don't want to run a business. And I tell them, this is not a hobby. No. Too expensive and too much liability. This is an expensive business to be in, and I find people who don't treat it like that. They treat it like it's just a hobby. I'll sell here and there, and then I'll be done. No, you're paying too much money your dues. Let's get to work. Let's get some business going. So I'm not nervous because I learned how to adapt, and that was one thing I had to do as a teacher. I've taught everything between 2nd through 12th grade. I had to learn to adapt regardless of who's in my classroom. That's exactly what I'm doing with this market. Anytime we have the ebb and flows, we just adapt. Yeah. Yeah, I remember my first uh, real estate investment property. I want to say it was like 9%. Like, yeah. And I sell my money. But it's funny. People are oh, my God. Yeah, it's five. <laughs> That's great. I heard it's five. I'm like, well, think you ain't seen nothing. Well, think about people who yeah. went in at 18% who last year they might have sold and made all this money. I'll take 18% any day of the week if exactly. I'm going to make all this money. So yeah. it's perspective. perspective. 100%. Yeah. Yes. 100%. Yeah. So what's now? Like, what's on the horizon for you in Ooh. the... Yeah, like as you're kind of buttoning up all yeah. these pieces in your business. So that's exactly what we're doing is we're tightening up the pieces. We're bringing on people who want to see other people grow. And I always tell people, I'm, I'm a servant leader. And it's how can I help? Because that's where the money is. Mm -hmm. Helping people. Not going out there and saying, where's the money? Because when you go searching for the money, it's not going to come. Yeah. It's helping people. And then you get blessed in return. And so I'm not going out there saying, well, how much is this person worth in that one? No, I'm tightening my systems. I'm looking at my standard operating procedures. I'm looking at where do we need to leverage? Who can we help? So I do a lot of volunteering. I do a lot of things for free because I'm not worried about, well, where's the next dime going to come from? Because when you serve, you're taken care of. And so right now we're looking to just serve people, help what we can, get in the community and build our brand because we don't want to be a company that's just looking for more and more and more because I believe in quality over the quantity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're, we're buckling down and building and looking for people because to your point, there's going to be a lot of real estate agents who get out of the business because now you're going to have to start working and they're not used to it. And so they're going to, if you don't burn your plan B, they're going to go back to it because that for them is safety and security. Yep. A hundred percent. All right. You want to do rapid fire? Uh, yeah. Rapid uh oh. Fire. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your favorite beverage? Ooh, uh, lemonade. Mm -hmm. Any specific one? Chick fil A. I was just going <laughs> to There is something magical that's I don't like know. On it's fairy dust. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> so good. Yeah. Um, best advice you've ever been given? Ooh, fail forward and fail fast. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could have dinner with anyone. I, this is so funny. I, I told my husband it would be Jay-Z because he's got yes. such a business mindset. There's so much he does behind the scenes that people don't know. 
I need to, and I didn't say this in a disrespectful way, but he's got a way of manipulating people to think one way as opposed to how they really want to think. They see things, but he's like, no, 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 no. Let me show you what it really is. I want that business acumen. Yeah, I, oh so God. I have a funny story about, so I used uh -huh. to do a big event uh -huh. um, and I had like Robert Hershevac and I had this list of who my dream mm -hmm. guests were. George W. and Jay Z. I'm like, right. I could not get two more opposite people. But I'm like, if those were, because oh have goodness. you read Decoded? Yes. I mean, yes. That's when like I was like, holy crap! Wow. Like he's so much more than just a. That's rapper. why I want to have that conversation oh, because I'm it's obsessed that with them. Yeah. Like, people are going crazy over Beyonce. I said the only way I'll pay that much is if we're having a business conversation. That is it. Never been to a concert. No, don't want to go. I just want to have a business conversation. So, do yeah. you see that people are um, starting GoFundMe's so that people will fund Ridiculous. their tickets? Ridiculous! Absolutely to insane. <laughs> I, I saw she was coming, so I what? saw when she and Jay Z uh -huh. toured, and I was like, "Oh, what? I'm like, maybe I'll go to that one." And I'm like, uh -huh. no, <laughs> no, no, like, because I honestly didn't. I, I. I like her. Yeah, I loved the Jay Z part yes. so much more than the Beyonce right. part. That I was like. I'm not. No, I'm yeah. sorry. I if can't I believe can people just, are paying that. They are. That and is insane like I have some me. friends who are posting. I got my tickets. I'm like, you better not talk about being in debt after this. Exactly. We're gonna have a problem. <laughs> yeah. But I just want to have a good business conversation with him about his investments. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So a more your your morning routine. Oh, so every morning I wake up, I pray, I meditate, I read the Bible, and I work out because if I don't do it in the morning, I'm not gonna do it. Lately, it's been a little challenging because we have some construction going on at the house. So it's been a little difficult mm -hmm. because I've been eating cookies to de-stress, which is not a good excuse. Um, but then after that, I go straight into business. And so it's either working on branding, helping an agent, or I have a coaching call, or I'm in a meeting. And then I try to be done by three because my daughter is in athletics. And so I want to be at the games and I want to be there. Mm -hmm. So typically my phone goes on, do not disturb by three. But people still text me and I still respond every now and then. So for me, the morning is more about just getting in tune with who am I? What am I doing today? What are my intentions? Hmm. I love that. So I much. love that. Yeah. Just intentionality. Yeah. yeah. And okay. that three yeah. cutoff time mm -hmm. because I was sharing this with someone else. It's like our children have worked full time jobs just as mm -hmm. we've worked full time jobs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, when she goes into you know, kinder or first grade, that's it. No more. Yeah. I'm going to be done at three because I want to go to sports and yeah. I want to participate and like be a room mom and all that. And stuff. it's hard having boundaries as an entrepreneur because you think you're going to miss something. Exactly. Well, it's that hustle mentality mm -hmm. and busy mentality. And that's, I think, where we go wrong, not only, well, as women, yeah. as entrepreneurs yeah. and as just human beings in general. Yeah. I've that. I used to tell, I say it all the time. Oh, I'm so busy. It's like, what oh. What does that serve? That's not serving anything. It's like a yeah. badge of honor. Oh, so I'd rather be productive than busy. And yeah. I can be productive in a really short amount of time than versus being busy all day. Yes. Yeah. I have mm -hmm. a couple of very talented people that work for us who don't need the 40 hours. Like, I've yeah. given their, their assignments, and I'm like, I'm not babysitting you. Mm -hmm. You do yeah. you. And, mm -hmm. like, their work is done. Yep. I'm like, I envy that. I've got to figure out how to time block better. Okay. And you know what's so funny cool. about that is our clients, when you give them the boundaries, they'll respect it. Yeah. yeah. And they have boundaries, and they'll give us the boundaries. Like, I'm not available. I'm at work. And we're like, oh, okay. But as soon as we put a boundary, we feel like we have to take it down for them. They'll respect no, it if you tell good. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another learning lesson. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so what are you reading right now? Oh, I have this book, The 12 Week Year. I'm reading it again. I've read it, but I'm reading it again. Um, 12 Week Year is so good in terms of being able to take some of the goals that you want and getting them done in 12 weeks versus having to spread them out a full year. Yeah. And so right now, that has been my let's go back to this book. Oh, Which, that one you know, too. I know we've talked about it once before, but you know what's interesting about mm -hmm. that that just clicked on my head? Most exercise programs are 12 weeks. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's so we true. There. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, top bucket list item. Oh, this is a hard one. <laughs> my top bucket list item is I, I want to have a boat and be able to take people on the boat and do uh, motivational seminars on the boat. Oh, I like that. That is a bucket list. Yeah. I've asked my husband to help me buy the boat, and he's absolutely not. So <laughs> that's that plan. <laughs> I'm going to cut him out of that part. Exactly. He won't be able to ride the boat. He's not getting on it. I think he's okay with it, which is oddly weird. Like, Ask for forgiveness, <laughs> not permission. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so what's a guilty pleasure? 
uh, cookies. Mm. If it's a caramel cookie, <laughs> I'm all over it. And that is the problem now. That's the issue is <laughs> I love me some cookies. Cookies and cupcakes, yes. I love me some cookies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I love yes. to bake them. And then really? Them. So my daughter yeah. can't bake cookies around me because I tell her I'm testing them. And she's like, where did all the cookies go? I just had to try them all to make sure you guys were good. Just make another batch. So yeah. she no longer bakes cookies. Anymore. My problem is I'll put them in the freezer to not touch them. And then frozen cookies are even <laughs> That's better. so good. <laughs> I'll just like sit there. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> all right. Well, Shalina, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, where is the best place for them to go? So texting me is usually the best because I respond immediately. 469-215-1702. That is all things real estate questions or if you just got an issue and you need a little bit. I tell people motivation sucks, but inspiration is everything. I'd love to help inspire you to think differently. All right. We'll have that on our notes page, too. Is there a website, too? Yes. It's coach.shalinatinglin.com. All right. Awesome. Yes. Easy enough. All right. Thank you so much My for joining pleasure. us today. Thank you for having me. This was yeah. awesome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>